Hello and welcome to the second video of this no return tutorial. Uh, this video is going to be about how you earn points in the encounters, the different enemy types, and the different modes. Now before we get into some gameplay, let's just go over what those modes and types and enemy types are. So right here in mechanics, there's four different modes. There's assault. Assault is basically three waves of enemies. Now I mentioned before on the board, if you're starting with the f the first, if you get assault on the first encounter, there's only three enemies to deal with, whether they're infected or people. I do need to mention some of these are infected only. Some of these are human only. Assault and hunted are both. Capture is only humans. Holdout is only infected. But we're starting with assault. It can be both humans and infected. If I'm calling them rounds, if the first round on the board is assault, you'll only you'll have three waves of three enemies each. When you if you're in the fifth round, like the one right before the boss, and you get assault, there's gonna be like six or seven enemies per wave. It's a it's a, it's a lot harder. Human enemies will also like some of them have melee weapons and pistols. By the end, they pretty much all have rifles and shotguns. It's rough. Uh, but yeah, that's assault. And next is hunted, which again is both a human and infected. Hunted by infected will get you the most points because they pretty much come to you and they can't injure you from long range. But uh, hunted is basically there. There's a countdown. There, there's not a time limit, but a, a, there's a there's a timer counting down. That's how long you have to survive. And then they'll just keep throwing enemies at you. There's also a meter filling up, and that will let you know like when it's spawning in more enemies. And um, yeah, you just. Uh, try and survive and you get points for killing them but we'll go over that a little bit later it's basically uh, just a non-stop onslaught <laughs> capture is a human only encounter where you need to kill every enemy and open the safe you can technically get like 50 points for not killing anyone and then opening the safe but no matter what you do have to kill enemies kill enemies basically this is the way i've always worded it it's basically one round of assault and then you open a safe that's pretty much it except the enemies are instead of looking for you they are guarding the safe and uh yeah there's parts supplements and uh, currency in there when it's all said and done and i should mention this now because i get asked the most there just like uh with hunted there is a countdown timer now that countdown doesn't mean you failed the round. It just means the safe locks. It's perfectly fine to uh, not open the safe in time. It's just going to cost you 50 points at the end and you won't get the stuff that's inside. If you are able to kill every enemy and open the safe with 30 seconds or more, you you get the safe automatically and you can use that time to loot. If you open the safe if you kill every enemy with less than 30 seconds, you need to manually open the safe. Holdout is just batshit crazy. <laughs> There's four different maps Holdout can happen. And just like with Assault with the difficulty... Um, oh, I forgot to mention that. If you get hunted on the first one, the time limit, or like the amount of time, is a lot less. When you're on like the one right before the boss, uh, it's like... Uh, the the timer is much higher. So, yeah. Capture, uh, the difference between the first and the last one before the boss is uh, basically the number of enemies. Like the first... Uh, only... I forgot to mention this. When it comes to the first encounter on the board, it can only be assault or hunted. Uh, the other four can be any one of these. But the first one can only be assault or hunted. Um, capture starting on the second one versus being the fifth one uh, is basically how many enemies. So the second one would have five enemies. The, uh, the fifth one right before the boss would be eight enemies, something like that. Holdout, same concept. If you get 
hold out on the second round, you have 20 enemies to kill. The third round will be 25. The fourth round will be 30. The final round, right before the boss, will be 35 enemies. This is basically protect a companion, and it just throws infected at you. Sometimes there's a bloater as well. Uh, I'm actually not sure about this, but sometimes... Yeah, sometimes they spawn in a bloater. Does he only spawn in... Uh, I'm making a tutorial, but I'm asking a question. I am recording this live with a chat. Can the bloater spawn in in the second or third encounter? Or can he only spawn in on the fourth or fifth? Okay, so the bloater... Uh, if you're doing holdout, bloater can only spawn in on the fourth or fifth round. Which is bullshit, because he's treated as a boss. But, yeah. <laughs> if, if you're going to do holdout, I'd recommend do, doing it on like the second or third round versus the fourth or fifth, because it, it is just legitimately tough. I would say sometimes tougher than any, uh, any boss. And also, there are only four holdout maps. What are they? The Overpass, Hospital, State Street, and the Gas Station. And each of them have different blockades that are pre-assigned so that they can either come from the left, right, and middle or just from the left side or just funnel them through the middle. And how difficult this is is based on the RNG of the blockades. I would say, though, Hospital is probably the easiest one. Okay, um, we also have Gambits. As you can see by the little example they give, Somewhere throughout a round, and it can be, they appear on any of the modes, you'll get a gambit. The gambit is basically a task you can do in the middle of the round. And uh, you get 10 points at the end of a round, but in the example of that, you also get something, whether it's five currency or it refills your health or it gives you some ammo. If you have to change your play style to get it, I wouldn't go for it. But uh, the best gambits are the ones that happen via your natural play style. But yeah, there's, there's quite a few different ones. And eventually it stops like explicitly saying what the gambit is on the top left, and there's just a little icon. If you go in your backpack, it will, uh, it will you know, say what it is in, in text. So yeah, sometimes they're worth going for, sometimes they're not. Um, there's also a dead drop, which is basically this mailbox will ask you to put something inside of it, like something you already have, like a med kit or a bomb or a shiv or something. Not a gun, just like a throwable or a med kit. And it's, um, what was I saying? When the round is complete, you'll get something back at your hideout. It could be a gun, it could be a crafting recipe. Those are pretty much the only two things. Um, yeah, it's some kind of recipe or a gun. It's random what it is. I don't think you're more likely to get something freakishly amazing the later you do a, a dead drop. I would recommend only doing it within the first two rounds or so because later on it starts asking for... Just like we were talking about, when it's really early on, they ask for one thing, but when it's much later on, they ask for like three different things, so... Yeah, I don't use this too much. If you do the dead drop, uh, there are no points involved. It All it does is you get something back at, at, at uh, the end. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, should have mentioned this in the other video. If you forget what mod is available in whatever round you're on, if you go in your backpack and slide to the right, it'll, uh, it'll tell you. All right, there, there's the workbench. There is technically a workbench in almost every map. I don't know if it's almost every map, but some maps have a workbench. Don't ever use them in the middle. Do not ever use a workbench in the middle of a, of, of a round. Just wait until you get back to the hideout. I don't know why they, they have that. Find me one person who has been like, oh, yeah, let me upgrade my weapons in the middle of a fucking round. I don't know. Anyway, uh, trading post. That's the locker I talked about. Um... All right, let's talk about the next one, which are the enemy factions. All right, you have wolves. Um, you know, uh, the human faction wolves. They have... 
They have pistols, revolvers, shotguns, rifles, and a unique enemy exclusive to wolves is they have they have dogs. Occasionally they have dogs. They only appear on assault occasionally, but uh, yeah. And then there's uh, seraphites. They have bows, and occasionally their their unique enemy is the big brute uh, with, with, with the big hammer. Um, rattlers are definitely the most annoying. They're a unique enemy. They don't have one, but it's basically they have clickers chained around different parts of the map that they're on. And they can be uh, frustrating <laughs> because it sort of messes up their pathfinding a little bit. Instead of just going to you, they'll flank around to avoid running into the chained clicker and stuff. Um, but the that's not the most annoying thing. The most annoying thing about rattlers that are, that wolves and seraphites don't have, rattlers have helmets and body armor, which are so so freaking annoying. <laughs> you don't get any like extra points for dealing with rattlers either. You would have to if you just have a pistol, you'd have to headshot them three times just to headshot them. Revolver, I think, is two. A bow is an insta kill for a headshot as long as the string is pulled all the way back, but. Um, yeah, um, for an example of the body armor being annoying, if you throw a Molotov at a Rattler that has armor, because sometimes the Rattlers don't have armor or helmets, but if you throw a Molotov at a Rattler that has armor, it just sets them on fire and that's it. It doesn't kill them. <laughs> Whereas if you throw a Molotov at any of these guys, it kills them right away. But here they just pat themselves out and that's it. So frustrating. They are the biggest inconvenience of the human uh, factions. That being said, if you're going for points, you actually want rattlers in the beginning for assault because the chained clickers can count for points via stuns and headshots and stuff, whereas the other enemies don't have that. Um, so again, if you're going for points and rattle and the like I mentioned in the first encounter for assault, the there's only three enemies to deal with in each wave. So if you get rattlers much later on, that's a living nightmare. Um, and then infected. Infected are the easiest faction to deal with. You're not penalized for having infected versus any of these three. They're all worth the same amount of points, but infected are just a lot easier to deal with because it, it's simple. They, they see you, they run at you. The way I, I sort of word it is, especially on grounded, when you're doing assault or hunted with people, you got to let them bring the fight to you. But when it comes to infected, you bring the fight to them. That's, that's the best way I can word it. Um, yeah, and it starts out with, uh, you know, runners and stalkers. But as you get a little bit further on, there will be clickers. And then towards the end, like the fourth or fifth encounters, there will be shamblers as well. And... Yeah, that's the other thing. Wolves and, yes, wolves and rattlers have one-hit kill weapons. Wolves and rattlers have a rifle that, on grounded, even if you have full health, they can one-hit kill you. So, very brutal. Yes. And yeah, I think I mentioned the chain clickers do count as enemies with regards to kills or unique kills and stuff like that. We'll get to bosses a little bit later. And these are the unique enemy types, like I mentioned. Dogs and chained infected. I think that's it. So why don't we go over each... Um, no, you know what? Before I do that, let me just open a random board and I will um, talk to you about just the, the mystery a little bit more. Because on a normal board... I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, good. There's a mystery here. Okay. So this is the perfect way to uh, point this out. I suppose I'm, I'll mention this here. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's intended or not. Whatever faction is first right here, they don't appear anywhere else. So the first faction is Seraphites. There are no Seraphites anywhere else. Anywhere else. It's just wolves... Rattlers and infected. So if you get an infected right here, the rest are going to be humans. 
The one, the two exceptions to that are Gondola, because that is the only infected only map. Um, what the game does is it picks the map first, and then it picks what you're going to do later. Like right here, there's Gondola. It's the only infected only map. It's also only hunted, because it's small. Makes sense. Uh, and there's always, almost always, one holdout. So if you get infected first, the only way you're going to get infected later is if Gondola shows up and if there's holdout. And again, every map should have one holdout. That's something else I should mention. Well, um, mystery. So what is this mystery? I was able to, to sort of narrow down what it's going to be because every board works in a similar way as long as it starts with people. So... Every board should have one holdout. There it is. Okay. Now, every board should also have three captures. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Every board should have three captures. There are exceptions to this. I had one where I, there wasn't a holdout. I had one where there were no captures. I've had one where there's two captures. Sometimes sometimes there's variations, but the most likely... you. If you're going to take anything from what I'm saying here, the most likely scenario is one holdout and three captures on a board. Now for infected. There should be six infected. Again, there are variations to this. I've seen five. I've seen seven. But there's supposed to be six infected. So one, two, three, four, five. This one's going to be infected. And that's how I know. If, say, this one had been infected, I would know this one would either be assault or hunted on people. That's how I know. So write that down if you have to. Most of the time, there's one holdout, three captures, and six infected encounters. Now, as for which is it going to be assault or hunted, I have no idea. There's no way to know. Because sometimes I've seen a board with seven assaults and two hunted. One time I've seen six hunted and three assaults. It... Because there's nine remaining ones. There's 12 things on the board. Uh, one, two, three, or 13. Yeah, there's 13 things on the board. The three captures and the holdout means that there's nine things left. And that's kind of split between assault and hunted. Sometimes there's five assault and four hunted. Sometimes there's five hunted, four assault. Sometimes it's six and three. Sometimes it's seven and two. So, yeah. <laughs> so, by process of elimination, this one right here is either assault or hunted on humans. Also, something else I should mention. If you're going for, like, encounter total uh, high scores or something, the same mod will never appear on the board more than once. Okay? Okay. So mirror mode, because it's there, will not be appearing anywhere else. And because enemies drop bombs on death is there, it won't be here. That's how you get the highest score. If you get mystery hunted by infected with bombs dropped, that's the highest you can get. And it has to be on the last one. So yeah. Now, why don't we talk about points? Uh, let me uh, back out of here real quick. Why don't we talk about points? So as we're going through uh, these uh, boards, especially for the daily run, you want to get as many points as you possibly can. It's kind of the whole point of, uh, of uh, no return runs, especially the daily runs. See how many points you can get. You can be satisfied with a completion, but... There are different ways you can uh, strategize. You can strategize to uh, get the most points out of an encounter. So I'm going to need some help from you guys with this one because I don't write things down. There are certain things that are worth five points, ten points, thirty points, fifty points, a hundred points. The hundred point ones are, you know, you completed the encounter, you didn't take any damage, and the um, your perfect accuracy. That will get you 100 points each. And then there's a fourth option that varies between modes. With Assault, it's 
if you did it under three minutes and five seconds, you get 100 points. Hunted for every, uh, the, the time limit isn't there. For hunted, every enemy you kill is worth 10 points. So if you kill 10 enemies, that's 100 points right there. Supermarket, we can kill 40 enemies, so that's where we get the highest points. Um, capture, there's the same time limit as assault. I, I mentioned before, capture is basically one round of assault. And then holdout. Holdout's probably the most bullshit. It's ally damage. So if they take damage, whatever amount of damage they took, that's that many points off of 100. So yeah, there's that. Then there's some smaller things. There's 50 points for not using a gun and not getting spotted. There's 30 points for only getting headshots on the kills. Not the... Um, not every bullet fired being a headshot, just on the kills. And I would say that's worth doing on, like, the first round. Or Assault on Infected later on. That's definitely worth doing. Because you can still get stuns in there. Uh, and then there's uh, some 10-point ones. There's a Gambit. When you complete a Gambit, you get 10 points at the end of a round. Um, there's... Yeah, the 10 points for the kills in Hunted. And you get 10 points for a multi-kill. So if you throw a bomb at someone and it also kills someone else, that is one multi-kill. I had a clip recently where I threw a bomb and it killed six enemies. That only counts as one multi-kill. Because it maxes out at two. If I were to get... If I were to kill six with three different bombs, then that's 30 points. You know what I mean? So, Yeah. Uh, 10 points for multi-kills. Then there's a bunch where you get 5 points. Um, that's with a stun, a melee kill, a headshot, and a kill with a hostage. Now a stun is either you shoot their leg and they go down. That counts as a stun. Brick or bottling an enemy also counts as a stun. Hitting someone with a stun bomb also counts. Unfortunately, with stun bombs, the stun bomb has to hit a person. Basically, with regards to getting points, stun bomb is basically a bottle. If you throw a stun bomb on the ground and it stuns five people, you're not going to get any stun points. It has to hit someone, and you can only get five. You also can't get more than one stun on one enemy. So if you, like, shoot someone's leg and then bottle them and then shoot their leg again, you're only getting five points. So you can only stun an enemy once. And a stun is also, yes, a clicker headshot. Mm -hmm. Now, in the stuns restore melee durability perk, if you, like, throw a pipe bomb at someone... They'll react stunned, and you'll even get the durability parts for it. But it doesn't count as a stun when it comes to to uh, score. It's kind of dumb. So, headshotting a clicker with a pistol or revolver, leg shotting an enemy, and uh, brick or bottling someone, or hitting someone with a stun bomb. Those are the only ways to get stuns. I think those. I th I think that's. Uh, I think that's kind of it with regards to the um, the point gettings. And, and it's the knowledge of those that um, can really help you rack up a high score. Um, also, if you have a revolver, if you leg shot an infected, all it does is sever their leg. So you, if, you're, if the character you're playing as has a revolver as their starting weapon, you can't go for leg shots on infected. You can for people. But... Um, yeah, because what I like to do early on is uh, go for all headshots, but also try and stun and hostage kill as many as I can. Um, okay, so finally we're going to get to some gameplay. We're going to start with Assault. I'm going to use Custom Run for this. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to turn off Infected. Or maybe I'll, 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 tur I'll turn them on, but... I'm going to uh, only go for this. 
And let's show off a round of assault. And I'll show you some techniques that get you the highest uh, score total. Right. Now I'm going with Jesse just because he's the best character. If you're... Why is he frowning so much? <laughs> Sorry. If you're going for high scores, you're going to want to play as Jesse. There really is no other close second when it comes to that. And, uh, yeah. All right, we're going to start against Rattlers. And that's the other thing. Sometimes, that, I forgot to mention that. There, When it comes to Assault, there will be enemies start in, and then it's either Search or Combat. Now, if they start in combat, they know where you are. They have an idea of where you are right away. They still have to get alerted to you, but they will run to your position. Um, in search, they start with, like, you got anything? No, search the whole area, you know. And what that means is, um, at the end of a round, if you start in combat you get 20 points versus starting in search. So sometimes I actually prefer this one. One thing with humans, though, is they're very good at flanking. So that, that's what can make this difficult. Um, what else to mention? Yes, sometimes you're given a partner. I forgot to mention this with the point getting. Sometimes you're given a partner. When you have a partner, you can't like turn them off. You're forced to have them for the encounter. You're given 20 points for not having a buddy. So let's put it this way. If you do an assault and you start in search and you have a buddy, you're out 40 points compared to not having a buddy and starting in combat. Two things of which you have no control over. It's randomized. The game just gives that to you. So even though the multiplier is less than the d default 2.5 via the positive mod, we're up 40 points compared to the other things I mentioned. So I will try my best here. It's Rattlers, so this will be tough. But I want to show you how Rattlers being the first enemy faction is actually beneficial for you because you can get stun headshots on the clickers as well. So you use this time to loot. The more you play, the more you'll know where stuff is. And because we only start with six bullets, I save the clicker kills for later. Loot a little bit and then try and... Uh, and then try and get to us. But because they're starting in combat, you want to play it a little bit safe. Don't... Again, when you're dealing with aggressive humans, don't bring the fight to them. Let them bring the fight to you. It's the best piece of advice I can give for people. Also, I forgot to mention, there are different variations of maps. There's a we're in the shipping yard right now. There's a variation of shipping yard where it's dark, raining, and like the whole like the direction I'm looking, that whole half of the map is open. Right now it's closed because there aren't as many enemies. This variation always happens with this one, but later on there are different variations of certain maps. All right, so let me just try my best. So what I like to do early on is go for headshots only. Remember, headshots are worth five points and you are you can stun enemies as well but what that what that does you get 30 extra points on top of the points you already got if every kill is a headshot so that's something i always try for so let's see if i can do that all right they're right in that doorway they're they're gonna come in through here so i can either right here go for a bottle throw or a pistol I'm going to let him come towards me, and then if he's gone, I'm going to... That's five points. I got him. Boom. Okay, that was supposed to be... That was supposed to be a headshot, and that would have counted as a hostage kill and a headshot. Basically, you want to get ten points per thing, so right there. I stunned the guy, got him in a headlock. I was that was bullshit that it wasn't a headshot but that would have been a headshot and a hostage kill so that's 10 points and then i headshot the guy i had so basically two enemies 10 points each again stun headshot hostage headshot so that's hostage kill headshot so that's 20 points each for them 
This guy has a gun, so I'm going to let him get close to me. And I'm going to use a bottle. The music... If the music dies down... Alright, here it comes. There we go. Okay, so if I had done that the way I wanted to, that would have been 30 points for three kills. And this guy's annoying me, so I'm going to... Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Okay, that was not worth it, and that did a number on my accuracy. But if I had hit that the first time, that's 10 points right there. Stun, headshot. And remember, we're going for only headshots. I'm not showing this off very well, but you get the idea, okay? You get the idea. And again, you don't want to do that on the first encounter because, yeah. And when each round of assault is over, there is a chest that pops up, and there's crafting ingredients and ammo in there. And a gambit popped up, which is kill an enemy with a bomber Molotov. Now, I'm trying for headshots only. I'm trying for headshots only. So you know what? I'm not going for that gambit. It's not worth it. All right, where are they coming from? Over there, so I'm gonna go over here. Now I only have, oh, I only have three. All right, this isn't good. Now because the clicker's in the way, they're probably gonna come from over here. And you know what, I'm just gonna... Right over here! That one was tough. Uh, I was a little low on ammo, so. I don't know where the other guy is. He's over there. So I'm gonna grab this guy at the last second. There we go. Damn it. Okay. I, if I had headshot him, I would have headshot this guy as well. So. Look for any ammo they drop. They are not dropping me pistol ammo. That's actually insane. Alright, you know what? I'll just get the I'll just get the ammo. Okay, I'm clearly missing a lot of shots. Okay. Let's just pretend. I shouldn't be missing. I'm just saying, this is what I try and go for on each one. Let's pretend my accuracy is perfect, okay? This is the stuff I try and go for. Okay, I don't have a bottle, so I'm just going to have to react to what I see. Now, sometimes it's to... If I see two enemies with a gun, I get one, and then... There we go. That was well done right there. And then before a round is over, I like to get a bottle for the next round. And use this time for one more kill. So there were a couple enemies there where I just decided to headshot them. You know, it's funny, 529 is actually not that bad. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. 100 points for a completion, 100 points for no damage. Accuracy is one, I missed how many shots, so... Yeah, that's pretty fair. No ally and start in combat, 40 points each. If I had started in search with a buddy, these points would be bye-bye. Would be uh, Gambit was 10 points. I'm, I missed out on the 30 because I had to kill one enemy with uh, uh, a bomb. So this could have been... Th think about it. That could have been 30 points better. If, if, and if I didn't miss a bunch of shots and I uh, had headshot that one guy if I had ammo, um, yeah, that's probably 40 points better or so. Just telling you what could have been. So what else? Uh, six stuns. Two hostage kills. Um... Should have been 11 headshots, and this is why rattlers are important in the beginning. Um, the clicker kills count. It's basically two, ex two or three, depending on the map, two or three extra enemies that you can get some points on. Just don't miss. <laughs> and uh, two of them were stealth kills. I don't know why or how. Sometimes that can just pop up there. Um, yeah. Yeah. To maximize points, you don't necessarily want to do what I did earlier where you just headshot them and that's it. You want to go for like stun, hostage, 
headshot and then headshot your hostage and then bottle and headshot the last guy that way you basically want to try and get 10 points out of each kill as you can whereas when i just headshot the guy that was just standing there that was just five points um yeah so i wasn't able to headshot one of them and i missed some shots so that's assault if we get assault much later on it's a lot harder and the name of the game just becomes survive i don't recommend going for headshots only there um yeah and you get to see the stuff in action so that round was worth we'll do this one next that round was worth uh, 70 parts 60 supplements and 22 currency Now, I mentioned when we're in the locker, uh, before you, f first thing you do after you do that is upgrade with your supplements. And then I suggest instead of crafting items, purchase them from the locker instead. So I'll get a med kit. And I recommend for the first four encounters, I would say, only going for one gun. Uh, your starting weapon. The reason for that, if I were to buy another right holster gun, I suppose it's not the worst thing in the world if you buy a left holster gun, but if you buy a right another right holster gun and Jesse or whoever you're playing as only has one right holster, you're going to end up getting ammo dropped for the gun that you can't equip in a moment's time. Basically, you're way more likely to get ammo dropped for the gun that you have if it's the only gun that you have so it's one of those things you find a way to make it work I've, I've had some horror stories in the past with that so so what do we spend stuff on I recommend spending stuff on bombs specifically the throwable bombs again every single character has trap mines and I, I do recommend getting them but go for these first And then it's pretty early. I'll upgrade accuracy. Honestly, I recommend only upgrading your gun when you... Um, what is it? When you uh, have enough parts to upgrade everything because the animations are slow and we get tired of them pretty quickly. Okay, now for the opposite that I mentioned. This is This is the complete opposite of this. It's against infected... It's in search, and we have a buddy. <laughs> now, when it comes to infected, even though this isn't the first one, I try and go for headshots only. And I mentioned before, bombs do not count as a stun. No. At least with regards to points. Now, having a buddy can make the headshot only thing kind of difficult. And even though the mod right now is increased uh, enemy health, if you're going for headshots, it doesn't matter. Again, use this time to loot. The more you play, the more you'll find out where all the good stuff is. And any weapon that a human enemy drops, they only have one hit in there. Alright, I'm going to ignore the gambit because there's probably some infected like right in my way here. I'll try. Look out! I got him. All right, now I'm going to back up. Tommy, I suggest you back up. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to find the last one and stun kill him. He's coming from this way. So there, we got three stuns on the clickers, on the headshots. And we got, uh, that one was very good. When it, when it comes to infected, I don't recommend trying to get a stun and unique kill on everybody because especially on grounded, if you put an infected in a hostage situation, they escape your grab immediately. So that's one of those things you don't try and get all fancy. When it comes to infected, they sprint at you. So try and get headshots Remember what I said before with humans. Oh, 
with the first assault. Try not to just headshot them. Go for stuns, hostage, headshots, stuff like that. With infected, it's okay. <laughs> I still recommend trying for the headshots only thing. But, um, yeah, it's okay if you just headshot them. When there's one enemy left, I recommend bottling them and then headshot because then that's a stun uh, headshot. And remember, 30 points plus, or 30 extra points if they're all headshots. And, it, you know, you're, you're being bombarded with infected so much, it, 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 it's sort of the only option here. All right. This, one, this is where it can get a little tricky. Notice how there's only, on the top right, there's only two enemies. This is only the second round. There's two enemies in this wave. One of them is a Shambler. Um, I don't think I can... If I had a bottle, I would... Here, hold on, watch this. Stun, headshot. Now watch what I do here. Oh, God. When there's a buddy, sometimes they can ruin it. Okay, what I tried to do there... A pipe bomb and a melee kill, or, and, a, and a punch is a kill, but a pipe bomb and two headshots is a kill. When there's a buddy, I think he went after the buddy instead of me. Buddies don't help. You can see, he, he's going after him. So I'm going to just try and get headshots on him. There we go. You want to aim just a little bit below his face. The reticle was a headshot. Shamblers make headshot only very difficult. So I tried to pipe bomb him. It wouldn't kill him. It would just uh, stun him. It doesn't count as a stun, but it would just keep him in place for a little while. And then you would just... Uh, yeah. I need a brick. Now, I know this because I played on this map a lot. There's a brick right here. It's not here. That's just great. Here we go. All right, anyway. We're getting rushed here, so... I tried to leg shot him. Didn't happen. There's supposed to be a brick right there. Anyway. There's supposed to be a brick right here. Or maybe it's right here. There is supposed to be. Anyway, that was an all headshot one. So I tried to leg shot that runner right there, but it didn't take. Then I would have put him in a hostage and then immediately headshot him. And then when the stalker was coming towards me, I, I leg shot him. And then, uh, yeah. Basically, I stunned as many as I could. That first one, there was no, there was no chance I was going to... Uh, leg shot and get him in a grapple because there was a clicker right behind him and the runner was getting really close to me. So if you're getting bombarded with infected, specifically runners, just headshot them. It's perfectly fine. And then you spend some time lining up the clicker shots. And then when there's two enemies left or so, usually one of them is a stalker. So they'll approach you a bit later. Uh, try for the stun headshots. If you don't get the stun, just go for the headshot. Because see, right here, look. Every kill was a headshot. Extra 30 points. And six of them were stuns. Uh, I think two bottles used and a couple leg shots and uh, three clicker kills. It was probably just one bottle used. Yeah, one bottle used, three clicker kills, and two leg shots, if I remember correctly. Something something like that. My math isn't adding up, but yeah. Now notice how we got a we got a lower total score than we did the previous round. You know why? Starting in combat and the buddy system. This one I mentioned was the exact opposite. This one was performed a bit better. We had we had all of these, but and we had this too. We didn't start in combat and we had a buddy. That's the, that's the stuff right there that makes a big difference. So basically, when it comes to infected, it's okay to just get headshots and stuff. But when you get down to a couple enemies left, start going for the, for the stuns and headshots and stuff like that. Because it's not really possible to get a... Um, it's not really possible to get... Uh, st uh, 
It's not possible to stun every enemy in an infected because they're very close together. They're well coordinated. Uh, and you can't hostage kill anyone because they escape it right away. Okay. I think that's enough showing off assault. I highly recommend staying, staying away from assault or hunted on humans later on in the encounters. Assault on infected is probably the easiest thing you can do. Hunted by infected is probably the next easiest. And then assault and hunted by humans are just hell. Uh, let's go to the next thing, which is hunted. Let's try hunted. We'll do one against people and then one against infected. The one with people is pretty easy, I would say, and that is, once again, don't bring the fight to them. Let right. them bring the fight to you. And this is the perfect map to show this off on. So. Hunted by people, it uh, is very difficult because they know where you are at all times. This is basically like starting in combat, no matter what. And, um, what else? Whether it's here or whether it's here, the name of the game, the goal, is to just kind of stay away from the people. Okay? So what we try and do for almost every single hunted by humans is either not get alerted and kill zero or one, or we kill as many as we can without using a gun. That's what we try and do. So for this map specifically, what we're gonna do, there's a big ax. I'm gonna loot a little bit. There is a big ax. It's always there, there's a brick, right here. Now you can either camp right here or go in the other room. Basically find a spot on whatever map you're given that you can't get flanked and you can hold your own. Uh, for the sake of this one, I'm gonna go over here. This is where I used to go. Next to that drop box is another good spot. On a map this small, it's hard to go the whole time without getting spotted. It's possible. So they basically just go here. Sometimes they lose sight of you right away, but they're going to walk in your general direction. And again, you can either like do this and then distract, or you can just... Now they know where you are. See, that gambit was just on our way with what we're already doing. So yeah, don't use a gun. When it comes to hunted by people, unless you're put in a desperate situation, don't use a gun. So now we're just on the lookout. Spread out. Uh, does that guy have a gun? Nope. Now I, I say because I only took him out with my fists because he was the only enemy there. You want to watch out for enemies that spawn in, um, who have guns. That's where it gets tricky. If they all had melee weapons, this would be the easiest thing in the world. But some of these guys are going to have guns, and that's where it gets tricky. So now I'm going to save my brick for later. Here's that. You have a gun. So I'm going to get him. No, he doesn't. Okay. But we're running out of time. So, oh god. That one has a gun. One thing I will notice, though. People, when it's hunted by infected... That was actually a very good round. When it's hunted by people, the enemies with melee weapons will push your position. Enemies with guns will hang back. 485 in an initial hunted round by humans was actually very good. For emergencies only. For emergencies only. I did not fire a weapon. Now, not using a gun didn't take away from how many I killed. It's the first round. There's not much time on the clock. 
and enemies spawn in quite slowly, I could have used a gun and maybe, maybe gotten one more kill. But it was much more worth it to um, not use a gun, and that's basically five enemies killed worth of points on Hunted. So when it comes to Hunted by Humans, that's the route you kind of want to take. If you have a lot of bombs, use them. It, it depends. If you think you can get a similar score with a gun or you want to go for headshots only, that's up to you. But that kind of play style is uh, highly recommended on Hunted by Humans, no matter which round you end up doing this on. Okay, now... When it comes to Hunted by Infected, I'm going to bring up a video. <laughs> hunted by Infected, you don't go for, you know, only one style of kill, don't use guns. Duh, duh. That all goes out the window. Try and get a stun melee kill or multi-kill on every single enemy. That's the play with Hunted by Infected. Hunted by Infected is probably... I wouldn't say it's the easiest. I say Assault on Infected is the easiest. But Hunted, I'd say, is the next easiest. And it results in the highest scores. Because they're a lot easier compared to humans. Uh, Val, he's in the chat. If it's okay with you, can I bring up your 1014? Just give me one second here. Again, Hunted by Infected isn't like... You don't have to overthink it too much, but there's one video I can bring up, uh, Valathra, or Val, or Valathra, I still don't know how to pronounce his name. He got a total score recently of 1,014. That's doubled than the points that we were just getting in these other examples I was showing you. He got it on Hunted by Infected on the fifth round in Supermarket. It's the sp it, There's the most time on the timer... Enemies spawn in really quickly, and it's the smallest map, so enemies are able to get to you much faster than other maps. I'm just going to play the whole thing. It's, it's, uh, it's like two and a half minutes, but yeah, it's so worth showing off compared to whatever I can show you here. It's, 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 a, it's a masterpiece. Look at, now he's not just going for kills, he's going for unique kills, multi-kills, stuns, melee kills, headshots. He ain't going for simple body shots and stuff. This currently is the highest total score in no return history right now. <laughs> because custom runs can't get you a higher total score. Because total score doesn't matter about the mods. Total score is um, you know, pre-multiplier. So we lay down trap mines so they ignite on spawn now this doesn't work for every map this is a smaller map multi-kill another multi-kill melee kill i'm only pointing out like what gives you five extra points stun stun multi-kill so that was 20 points for those two Stun, headshot. Stun, melee kill. Stun, headshot. Another multi kill from the trap mine. Stun, stun, multi kill. Stun, melee kill. That's 10 points. Again, st st I mentioned it before. Stuns, 5 points. Melee kills, another 5. Multi-kills, another 5. Now that right there, that right there did not give him any points besides the hunted kill. So that shambler was only 10 points. But you want to spend your time... He could have ran in there and killed him with a melee kill. But that would have uh, taken time away from taking out these runners here, which you can get more points on. There's another one. And he's just choosing to chuck two bombs at it instead of meleeing him later. Stun. Headshot.
multi-kill. It's going to cost him a little accuracy there. All right, he's going for a multi-kill again. Multi-kill, very nice. Probably just wants to... All right, now he's thinking, let's just kill as many as we can. Lower the numbers a little. Stun melee. He's just committed to those stuns, which is what he should be doing. That runner wasn't close enough. Multi-kill. That one might count for a headshot. He could have gotten one more kill out of that if it didn't sever his leg. Yeah, when you get closer to the end, just try and kill as many as you can. But this resulted in 1,014. 41 kills, some, some missed shots. Uh, he got the gambit, 10 multiple kills, 21 stuns, followed by either 8 headshots, uh, 7 melee kills. That right there, no matter what map you're on, no matter... No matter what map you're on, no matter um, what round it is, that is how you do Hunted by Infected. Now, some map, some rounds or maps don't spawn enemies in that quickly. Remember I mentioned Gondola is an infected-only map. Um, it could be the fifth round. They're not going to spawn in that quickly, as they did in Supermarket right there, even if it's the fifth round. Um, but no matter what, you go for stun, melee kill. Or stun, put him in a headlock, headshot. It just something you do. You, you have to abandon the, the mindset of, like, kill them in only one way. Not using a gun or only headshots. That can go out the window and hunted. Knee shots aren't necessary when you're getting rushed, but you, you, you try and max out your score potential. That's really all it is there. So yes, nothing will result in a higher score than Hunted by Infected. If you want the highest scores, that's the route you go. Now it starts to get tough. If you have a board here... Uh, hold on one sec. If you have a board here where it's like 2.65 Hunted by Infected or 4 Multiplier Assault on, it, assault on People or something... You might end up with a similar score no matter what, because the multipliers make the biggest difference. But, uh, yeah, sometimes the choices are, are pretty easy. But, yes, that's how you do Hunted by Infected. Just And it, when they're in the earlier rounds or you're on a big map, you might not be able to get collateral kills. I'm just letting you know that is, that is like, a play style there. And, uh, yeah, if it's early on or it's a big map, just focus on those stun melees. And yeah, um, let's focus on Holdout next. There isn't much to say about Holdout. It's fucking crazy. That's pretty much all it is. Um, it's pretty much all there is. It's freaking crazy. I think I mentioned, the earlier on Holdout happens, the, um, the easier it is to handle. Can it even happen early on? Okay. Oh, it can. How about that? Like I mentioned before, when you're doing a standard run, the first one can only be assault or hunted on humans or infected. It can't be capture. It can't be holdout. Holdout can happen either here, 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 or here. And there's only four maps for it, like I said. State, street, gas station, overpass, and hospital. Hospital, I would say, is the easiest. I'd say this one's the next easiest. These two are kind of close in terms of difficulty. State Street is the hardest because there's a lot more entry points. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll just do one here. It's chaotic. How easy or difficult it is honestly comes down to one, if a bloater shows up, which should only happen on the fourth or fifth rounds, and two, the blockades. So the game does give you a lot of stuff here. I'll pick up the axe just because. So the blockades. This one's always blocked. 
This can be blocked. So can this. So can this. So can this. And so can this. Okay, so the only openings are these two windows right here. This window and this window. So you know what? I'm going to... Now, there's only 15 enemies. If this was the last round, there'd be 35. And the chance of a bloater. I, I suppose we can hang in the middle. We got the bombs dropped on death mod, which you can see in full display. It, it's really funny. Whoa. It can get laggy. You just try and keep them off Tommy. Now the problem with like killing them from far away Oh shit. Watch out. Try not to kill too many in a row. Um what was I saying? The problem with killing them from far away is they'll drop ammo for you, but you won't be able to pick it up. So yeah, it's much harder. Hold on, will this kill me? Oh, it disappeared. Stuff. Thank you. So yeah, I'll be totally honest. There really is no good strategy for a holdout. The only thing I'll do is if like we're able to funnel the enemies into one location, but there's one open spot like right here, I will put a trap mine down there. But yes, I just being totally honest, the the bombs dropped on death certainly helps in this situation. But the worst thing about holdout is what you are rewarded for it. You just saw a total score of 1,014 on Hunted by Infected. This is also an Infected encounter, but it doesn't reward you well enough. That's, that's more not just because of the difficulty, but that's the big reason why I stay away from Holdout, is the score. 420 is an A. I think I... Um, I don't know if I mentioned. Um, with regards to the like score you get, I don't know where I could find this out, but... Oh, there we go. A C rank is 200 points, a B rank is 280, A is 400, and S is 450 or higher. The biggest reason holdout like really sucks is because I mentioned um, assault has the time limit thing for every, I don't know if I mentioned this, for every, every five seconds past three minutes, you're deducted one point. So if you did an assault round in three minutes and four seconds, you get 100 points. Three minutes and five seconds, you get 99 points. And then every five seconds after that is deducted another point. Hunted, every, 10, every kill is 10 points, no matter what, even on, uh, against people. Holdout, the replacement here is ally damage. For every thing of damage they take your 100 points are deducted by that much which is tough because the infected don't go after you they go after your buddy except the bloater the bloater comes after you so yeah i've always said how easy or difficult a holdout is is dependent on what round you're in and how good the blockades are because they're random i wish you could choose because it's, it's a lot more doable and easier when you funnel them in. I will actually show you an example. This video is a little bit longer, but it's all about showing off uh, things as much as you can. I have a video of a very, very well-performed holdout. It's like three minutes long. So this was before I knew what the, how to find out what was on a board. This was a 35 enemy holdout, and it's still the best one I've ever done. So I'm just, I'm just going to let it play. Hello? It was on the overpass, and a bloater didn't show up, which, ma which made it a little bit easier. Hmm. 
Yeah, I got good RNG. This window, this window, and that entrance are open. The side and the left window are clogged, which made this easier. So because this was the furthest one away from these two windows, I laid down a trap mine. I don't think I would do that today. 35 enemies. Now again, you're trying for unique kills, and because there's so many infected, I don't really have time to leg shot them and kill them. And I didn't have a shotgun either. Otherwise, right there, I would have tried for a multi-kill. But you try and make every kill at least worth five points. That was ten. That's the momentum perk right there. You saw the screen kind of showed that Jesse looked high for a second. And then he was able to immediately kill someone right after. Um, okay, right there. This one has the decreased health mod. So a swing with a melee weapon on a runner was enough to kill it. That isn't normally the case. That's five points. Now, there was no one around, so I just decided to do that. Yeah, go, you go for the stuns and melee or stuns and headshot as long as, like, you're not bombarded with enemies like I was there. Now, notice, I only have one gun, so I'm getting a lot of ammo dropped. So I, I didn't get any points on that one because Tommy had gotten hit a couple times. Shambler is one more hit, yeah. So Tommy's killed a couple. You don't get any points for c your companion killing a couple. But you can see we're just trying for as many headshots or stuns as we can get. Try not to just body shot them for no reason. And then I, that resulted in a 557, which is pretty damn good. That is a very high score for a holdout. 20 headshots, 7 melee kills, 5 stuns. Out of 35 enemies, there were only 3 that were killed in a non-unique way. Um, which I can think of. The one trap mine where it severed the runner. Uh, I body shot one, and then I think Tommy killed another. So... Yeah, that's an example of a good holdout. And uh, if a bloater shows up, if a bloater shows up, bombs. I would recommend saving all your ammo uh, for the other infected and just use up your trap mines and your pipe bombs or molotovs, whatever. Just try not to use guns on them unless you're out of bombs, in which case that's the only option. But yeah, that is my recommendation there. Okay, so that's holdout. It's a mess. I Again, I think State Street is the hardest. Hospital is the easiest. Just try and keep your allies safe. That's the most important thing. Okay, there's one more left. Capture. Now this one's interesting. You approach it from the perspective of there's it's basically one round of of assault. Except the enemies aren't looking for you, they're just defending um they're just defending a safe. All right, now I have to use a gun here because I don't have uh uh because I don't have um what is it? 
any bombs. What I recommend for capture basically is not using weapons because um, if you go for headshots only, first of all, that's difficult. Again, this is just because I'm doing a custom run, so it's only capture the entire board. But capture only appears three times, and if it appears somewhere over here, there's like eight enemies. That's really tough to headshot them all because, and this is the unique thing about capture, every single enemy has a gun. Unlike Assault, unlike Hunted, no matter which one it is, second, third, fourth, or fifth, every single enemy has a gun. So headshotting all of them can be difficult. Um, so I recommend, no matter which character you have, if you have an Ellie character or an Abby character, even if it's not Jesse, I recommend killing them all with bombs. If you get one on the second one, maybe you're able to headshot all of them. Maybe. But I wouldn't recommend that for here, because you have less time and more enemies to kill, whereas over here you have less enemies and more time. So you can get away with using a gun here, but I really don't recommend it here. And again, it's 50 points for collecting the safe. And then there's more on top of that. And this is the weird thing with capture and like the non-balanced nature of it. You're given the three minute and four second time limit for 100 points for capture. Whereas assault, there's three waves of enemies. Capture is just one wave of enemy and they're focused on just hanging around the safe. You get 100 points if you can do this in under three minutes and... and uh, five seconds, just like assault, but it's naturally just a lot quicker. So that that's kind of weird, and a big reason why capture is uh, probably the e no, not probably it is the easiest human encounter. So I'll do one again. Capture never shows up on the first one, never ever ever. So we'll see how many uh, humans there are, and I don't have any bombs, so I'm forced to use a gun. I'll use Jesse's silencer and see if I can do this without getting alerted. Now, another thing with capture, and I just remembered. Alright, four, four enemies. With assault, I forgot to mention this. With assault, enemies are sort of pre-planned where they are going to spawn. They will spawn one foot away from you if the, if the game deems it worthy. And that's happened. One moment, please. Just give me one moment. I have a clip here of one round of assault in the forest. Watch what happens. They spawned right next to me. Right next to me. So you know what I ended up do what I ended up doing on this map? I ended up placing a trap mine there. And it has worked so frequently, they blow up immediately and the first wave is done. It's a brilliant strategy. So yes, there are predetermined assault spawns spawns that are not dependent on where you are, which is stupid. The reason I'm mentioning that, capture is the opposite. They will not spawn a safe right next to you. They will, they usually spawn it where you're not looking and not where you are. So there are three or four different spots a safe can spawn. On capture, uh, on a TV station, it can spawn where it is under the stairs or in the room to the left or in a couple different rooms to my right. So there's four different spawns. Resort has three spawns. Hospital has four spawns. And, um... I actually have uh, another clip that I haven't shared here. Just, uh, once again, give me one moment here. I want to show you an example of a capture that happened on Hospital. There is one spawn location that is significantly easier than the others. I have it right here. So what I'm doing here is I want it to spawn in an area to the right. So I stand in a certain spot and look a certain way so we can, yeah, right here. 
I manipulate that spawn location. So it spawns over there. And watch this. Just watch the people melt. Because this is such a small area. Now, not every area has them all grouped together like that, which is why whenever we get hospital, I try and manipulate this spot. So yeah, that's the first thing you got to learn. First of all, you learn where the locations are, which, you pref which ones you prefer, and then try your hardest. It's not totally consistent, but try your hardest to manipulate those spawns. Like, oh, I hate when the safe spawns here. I'm going to run to this area. That's basically what you do. Okay, because I have no bombs, I'm going to try and headshot them all for the 30 points. And I'm going to try and not get alerted because I have a silencer. And we have time to do this. So they're not going to wander around the map too much. They're pretty much all going to hang around here. Uh, forget the gambit. Well, maybe not. I think she's going to turn around. I don't know what she, I don't think she knows what she wants to do. I'm just going to give them a moment to see what they feel like doing. She's going to hop down. Just give them a moment to see what I want to do here. Oh, yeah, I'll mention the safe thing as well. All right, we're still not alerted yet. And we have a minute and a half left. Ow. All right, we'll forget that. Oopsie. Okay, so they're all pretty much just going to come up here. My silencer only had two things in it. Uh, Jesse's first supplement upgrade is increasing the durability to four. Okay. Now, even though she said, there you are, there's a couple things to mention here. Now that we're down to one enemy, the last enemy is always going to hang around where the safe is. That's the most important thing. So this person is going to be somewhere around the safe. And fun fact, that right there counted as 15 points. One for a stealth kill, one for a stun, and one for a melee kill. That right there was 15 points. So when you get down to the last person, wait for them to lose sight of you, which you can tell based on the music or based on their body language, and go for that brick uh, takedown. Okay, now you see the timer on the top right? If you kill every enemy with 30 seconds or more, the safe is captured automatically. If you kill everyone with less than 30 seconds, you have to open it manually. I'll show you the opposite example in the next one. We'll do much better. God damn. Then you use this time to loot. There's usually a med kit there. And what's, what's interesting is when you get the safe automatically, you use that time to loot. And what's funny, I don't know if this is a glitch or not. Yeah, that was bad. I know. Oh, I did it in... Th I, I, sorry, I went too quickly. I did it in three minutes and four seconds and got 100 points for it. If I had spent one more second, <coughs> I would have lost one point. Uh, What was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, well. Okay, so I like to do that first. Let's grab a med kit and let's focus on bombs. Here we go. I also recommend uh, getting a shiv upgrade for getting grabbed. 
I also want supplements, please. No supplements. Okay. Jesse's supplement upgrades makes it so. Again, improved dur. I forgot he only starts with two. Improved dur durability on the silencer. Improved pipe bombs with a radius, and then you can hold six and craft three at a time. That's why Jesse's the best right there, along with the ability to just keep re-rolling and re-rolling and re-rolling. See the little infinity sign? He's the only character that can do that. It's hilarious. So yeah, sometimes early on in capture, you might want to go and try for headshots only. But most of the time, I recommend going for bombs only. Or not bombs only. Um, bomb as many as you can, and then go for like bottle melee stuff. Basically, things that will get you points that don't use a gun. Because you will get 50 points for not using a gun. Alright, let's try... Let's try houses. There's a lot of different capture maps. A lot different. So this is one where I'm going to try and manipulate the spawn. I prefer the one at the bottom of the hill. So to my right, I want it to spawn just to my right, so I'm going to run away from it and look away from it. And I got it. Cool. That's my favorite spawn right here. Just ignore him. Now wait for them to come out. You can go around the other side too. I just, I usually get alerted going there. Now you can either, even though she, right there, even though she's not close, as long as the little throwable circle is on her from the moment you hit throw to the moment he releases, it will lock onto them, even if they're far away. So this one, even if she runs to the left, it will lock onto her. The gambit was like on our way. Now the one thing you would like want to try here is multi kills. The one thing you would want to try here is multi kills. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yep, we got it. Multi kill. So that's ten points. Right there. Now for this one, there's only one enemy. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. I didn't mean for that to happen. She's not going to come over here. She's not going to come over here. You know why? It's the last enemy. She is programmed. They are programmed to stay next to the safe when it's the last enemy remaining. So if there was an enemy out there and I killed an enemy in here that enemy outside would sprint back and be next to the safe so right here you can tell by her body language we're in stealth mode now so what I'm gonna do stun stealth kill melee kill and because there are more than 30 seconds left on the clock the safe is captured see that so now I'm going to sprint What's, uh, again, the funny side effect, he doesn't lose sprint speed. So we're just going to loot like crazy. Pick up any ammo that they dropped. Uh, maybe a bottle. Is there a bottle out here? No, but you can just go. Outside enemies don't always come back for the safe. Well, that's what they're supposed to do. When there's one enemy left, they will guard the safe. Or there always has to be an enemy near the safe. That's how it works. 555 is very good for a capture. Uh, no ally. Again, there's the 20 points for not having a buddy. Safe was captured. That's 50 points. We completed the gambit, which again was just sort of on our way. Sometimes the gambit would be headshot an enemy, and it's like, I'm trying to not use a gun. 10 points isn't worth the 50 points we're going to get for not using a gun. A multiple kill with one bomb killing two enemies. Uh, five points for the bottle throw stun. Uh, the last enemy I said basically was a stealth kill, stun, melee kill. And then for emergencies, emergencies only. I didn't use a gun. So when you get capture, no matter what character you're using, try, just try, and um, do it without using a gun. The only way that could have been higher 
is if I wasn't spotted. Every now and then, the whole like system glitches out, and you get the 50 points for not being spotted. As, uh, as of me recording this now, I don't know what is done to to make that happen it used to happen quite quite uh quite a few times before they didn't patch it out it just sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't i to this day i still don't really know um but yeah that's pretty much the only way uh, we have theories but really no way to like prove it so yeah the only thing that could have been better is if uh there were more enemies. Yeah, having more enemies certainly helps with the more unique kills. Like sometimes if there's like eight enemies there, you know, you chuck bombs into into the building. Sometimes they come out of there and I will like uh brick and melee kill one of them and then I find another bottle and then I kill the last one so you can get like a more unique kill at the end and stuff. But yeah. That was a good example of a capture right there. Highly recommend using bombs. When it comes to rattlers and molotovs, that's when it can get a little tricky. That's basically the one combination you don't want. You don't want to capture against rattlers with an Ellie character because then the molotov doesn't really do anything. And that's when you start to question everything. <laughs> I'll be totally honest with you. Even I don't really know what to do there. Can't headshot them because they have uh, helmets, and um, yeah, maybe maybe work on uh, molotoving the non-armored enemies, and then work on like stun bombing, melee killing the armored enemies, something like that. But yeah, oh, and somebody asked, how do you pick things up so quickly from the from the case there? You basically just hold down triangle. You basically just hold down triangle here. The whole time. Not like you tap triangle and then hold down triangle to open it. You just uh, hold down triangle the entire time. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the four, the, the four modes. For the highest scores, you want hunted by infected, especially towards the end. Um, I was, I once was able to get 4,541 points in one encounter because it was hunted by infected in supermarket mystery bombs dropped on death on the fifth encounter. I got 841 total score, which resulted it, with a 5.4 multiplier, got me over 4,500 points in a standard run. So for the highest points, get good at Hunted by Infected. Uh, when it comes to Assault or Hunted on Humans, like later on in the board, if you're forced to do that, you got to cheese the encounter. Sit behind a spot where they can't flank you, and then just pick them off one by one. Again, maybe like disturb, <laughs> disturb a hornet's nest and then just sit back and wait. If they start in combat, that makes it a little bit easier. But uh, yeah, those two are, are definitely the toughest things. And capture, as you can see, if it's not against rattlers, uh, it's um, doable. It, it's it's doable. And again, with the spawn stuff, with the safe. Everyone has a preference for each map, what their preferred safe spawn is. But just know you can manipulate it to a certain degree if you uh, run to the spot where you hate where you hate it spawning in the most okay that's everything i can think of with the uh, the factions the modes and the points and last uh, we're done with this video last video is going to be the bosses six different bosses i'll make my own video on that so yeah that's about it thanks for watching and i'll see you bye